Every time you hear about the DNA double helix, you are hearing a story with a crucial character missing. What if the most important proof of life's blueprint was captured not by the famous Nobel winners, but by a woman they sidelined, insulted, and whose data they took in secret, this is Rosalind Franklin. A brilliant, meticulous chemist who could see the atomic structure of things. In 1951, she arrived at King's College London to study DNA. She was met with a wall of cold condescension. The men in the lab, including her colleague Maurice Wilkins, saw her not as a peer, but as a technical assistant. Undaunted, she perfected a technique to photograph single fibers of DNA. After a 100-hour exposure, she developed photograph 51. It was breathtaking, a perfect, clear, X pattern that screamed helix. It was the smoking gun. Without her knowledge, Wilkins showed her photograph to her rivals, James Watson and Francis Crick. In one glance, Watson knew they had won. They built their famous model. They published. Her photograph was published as mere supporting evidence. She moved on, doing pioneering work on viruses. She died of cancer at 37. Four years later, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins won the Nobel Prize. Watson would later dismiss her in his memoir as, Rosie, a difficult woman. We live in the genetic age she helped birth. Our question is, does a discovery belong to the one who imagines the shape, or the one who holds the photograph that proves it? Who deserves the Nobel for DNA, the theorists, or the experimenter who provided the proof? Argue your case in the comments. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss tomorrow's mystery.